today we address Senator Rennick. I'm just going to talk to you today because we can see in our country now it's starting to become more apparent to everyone given that uh, this boss man here of freelancer.com has also put an address together which involves Anzac and Australian history and a way of life that we uh, became as a people. But that has since been squandered, crushed, pushed out of existence by certain players inside an Australian government going back long before, before John Howard, Senator Rennick. This is a conspiracy at law where people have conspired to hold offices for the mere purpose of financial gain. Isn't that right, Scott Morrison? It's all about that financial gain. Isn't that right, Malcolm Turnbull? So, when, when we look at money masters and treasurers and what they do with the economy and how that doesn't help the Australian in their home, it helps Malcolm Turnbull in his business, it doesn't help you in your home. So, Senator Rennick, it, it must be becoming apparent to you that there's something wrong in this country when criminals running for parliament in Cairns, and I think this guy is very well spoken and very well uh, addressed, so good on him. But, but when you are so disconnected from what's on the ground and your police officers and your whole modus operandi that comes out of your parliaments, like the Queensland Parliament, when, when that's so disconnected from the people because all it does is the bank, because all it runs on is the credit from that bank, it never thinks about getting out of that debt, does it, Senator Rennick? All, all it cares about is the constant perpetual motion of being in that machine that is the credit machine that they all work for, therefore neglecting what's on the ground. And then your police force is so fractured from reality following all of the legislation of a nanny government while it treats the population like wards of the state. And what if the people have had enough of it, Senator Rennick? They didn't listen to us over a, a jibby-jabby. They didn't listen to us over mandates. They didn't listen to us over a trillion dollars that they borrowed from some money master. They don't care. The evidence is on the table as to what shareholders have done with the Commonwealth. Taking it from the people, Senator Rennick. Taking it from the people and then committing crimes against that constitution because they believe as administrators they have the right to pull it apart and do what they want with it. And that's not the rules of administration that were agreed by on an international stage. Then we look at all these wars going on around us, Senator Rennick. And you must think the people of Australia are stupid. You must honestly think that we'll just lap up anything that comes out from that TV. When it can be demonstrated very clearly that in some way this Australian government supported real-world Nazis on the ground in Ukraine. I thought the ANZAC fought against all that communist bullshit, Senator Rennick. So well, what is this Australian government doing being in cahoots with that stuff, Senator Rennick? Would that demonstrate a problem that's going on in your society? It's causing it all to be woke with rainbows. I mean, the Queen did warn us that we would know them by their rainbows. 
them. Them. And then she played some Vera Lynn. We will meet again, I think she said. Well, we're here. Didn't really go away, did we? We just woke up to the fact that this was happening. I mean, some of us have died for a very long time, Senator Rennick. But when we start to put all these criminal offences on the table now, having defined very clearly at law, Matthew 6.24, you can't serve two masters. And one of those masters has been human trafficking and enslaving a population so far as to poison it. Senator Rennick. Now, you have been doing very well in those Senate estimates reports and in the Senate just in general when it comes to questioning this government over its medical authorities. But you aren't hitting the nail on the head as to why they operate under the Hague Conventions in the very first place and what those Hague Conventions detailed in relation to that action, that, that very action. So if you're obligated to all those rules, why'd you go outside them? Why'd you go outside them? Did you think the Australian population was just the dumbass Australian population that would do your bidding? Well, maybe you proved that half of them are. What about the other half that didn't accept the lies that were coming out of the premiers of the states? didn't accept the threats that were made on the TV, didn't accept the way that people like Jackie, Jackie Lambie said, we're going to chase you all down and it'll be you on the back foot. Just so that no one's in any doubt about the fact that this is an outbreak and is moving to become a pandemic of the unvaccinated. These are direct threats that have come from politicians over medical things, Senator Rennick, demonstrating very clearly some sort of crime occurring when these people make threats of your safety in relation to medicine. It's a crime. So you're going to get up off your ass and go to the AFP and put that legislation down on the table and say it's about time now that you cleaned up house. It's about time now that you followed the rules that you were obligated to. Those hate conventions, that international humanitarian law in your role as administrators to a constitution. And if you don't believe that that be true, let's discuss this Australian history wherein the Statute of Westminster said that they would not govern us anymore and that they would not make laws for us anymore. Why would that be when that's already written in the Constitution? Would that be a higher severing at the Crown? that we would be sovereign in our own right and join the League of Nations as a sovereign and independent country, meaning that that king wasn't our king. So why is that king our king again? So we go to Statute of Westminster 1942 and the Adoption Act, at which you did request and consent that they be our nanny in our own failures to do what? declare war in 1939 without the people, without the country, without the crown sealed by those Anzac severing from that king over there. So would that be an act of treason by Robert Menzies? Seems so. Declaring war on behalf of foreign powers without consultation from powers within. So are we always controlled by the British and never allowed to grow up in the standing that was given to us on an international stage in the joining of the League of Nations? So Senator Rennick, there is a history here that you wish to ignore at law, at law.
because that king is not that king. So I got interrupted, had to go down the road and help someone. So I just went down the road. Now, that's sort of lacking in Australia, isn't it? We can demonstrate that by going out to the highway here and lying in the gutter like a dead body. And I bet you no one stops their car for a day or two, Senator Rennick. We could go out there and be broken down and no one will stop their car for an hour or two. This is the society that you as government brought here. This is your immigration, dividing the country from its ideals because that's what you do. You can't keep administering the people into nothing unless you divide them from each other. Con them all, make them all believe that there's a benefit to be gained from division and then topple the hat at the top, right? Well, it's just a hat, they all said. It's just a hat. So, so why is everyone changing hats there, Senator Rennick? Why is everyone changing hats? See, so at some point, you have to accept in that parliament, all of you, including you, Senator Rennick, that you don't represent the people you represent the money going through the bank that runs the people's assets. That's all. It's become very evident by the way you've trashed our country, put concrete everywhere, increased all of the legislation for all of the good little wards of state that we all are, slaves to you. Real world slaves to you that, you know, you could hit with fluoride for 75 years. Oh, we need to do that, don't we? Well, that just got proven in America to be rat poison in the water, just like they did in those concentration camps there, Senator Rennick. Just like they did in those concentration camps there, Senator Rennick. Like this one we all live in, managed by your little wardens out there in your, your government, with their little black nobility hidden behind the executive branches of government there, Senator Rennick. And none of you obey the rules laid down on the table by God, do you? You all like to push it to see how far you can break those rules. Thinking that the Australian population is just going to sit on its hands forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But now you've got businessmen like this guy from Freelancer.com speaking up against how his country's turned into a concentration camp covered in concrete prison buildings supplied by concrete prison trade supplies. You know, those ones that go in those concrete slab buildings that they erect overnight in concrete slab car parks, Senator Rennick? You know, that those ones that treat us like prisoners in our own land? that sell us cheap, dodgy products and take all of our good stuff offshore under some sort of Lima agreement, Senator Rennick. You know, so the people are starting to wake up to the fact that you've all undermined them, their crown, their god, their Anzac, their line of authority in their constitution. And at some point, as those fancy hats change, does not one hat become a fully liable party being the one aiding and abetting those that committed serious, heinous offences? Or did she say, we shall know them by their rainbows, Senator Rennick? The Queen in the fancy hat said, we should be warned, they're coming, the communists are in the gate, we will know them by their rainbows, their woke ideology, and the further undermining of the family unit and family estate. God, treat all those wards like they're dumb as fuck, right, Senator Rennick? 
got to talk down to them all like they're little kitties, right, Senator Rennick, because they know nothing about shareholders, do they, Senator Rennick? They don't know that all of their money's being played by money men like uh, Scott Morrison and uh, Malcolm Turnbull for their own profit and benefit at the expense of the people in the country. We can see that by robo-debt. We can see that by automated fines. We can see that by cameras dictating everyone's guilt, Senator Rennick. We've lost control of our world to these evil people that are imprisoning us in our own land. And the people are starting to wake up to it because look at all that child crime going on. Where did those children learn to disrespect those Nazis you call police officers? Might it be from their actual parents that have been screwed around for an entire generation by these Nazi thugs? Might that be where it comes from? Might you have bred this into two generations now bringing on a third that just wants to trample down all of the things you created? All of the things that are godless, that you work for? all of the things that are causing the demise of a country, Senator Rennick. So at some point, do you take responsibility? Because you're the ones that sit in a parliament that created the country into this. You're the ones that took party to an offence. You're the ones that actually work against the economy of this country by supporting things like Israel to do all of that for us instead. Isn't that right, Pauline? Isn't that right, Peter Dutton? Peter Dutton said if, if the Jews don't run Australia, it could be the end of civilization. What he means is that he can't keep you all as the debt slaves that you are while he lives on the silver spoon. Isn't that right, Pauline? Concrete everywhere. As you pointed out in your little cartoon, that, that snowy hydro scheme's like a vacuum cleaner, isn't it? Into the hands of all of these people that have done something pretty wicked with snowy hydro. And that's just one example, isn't it, Scott Morrison? That's just one example of you ripping off the country and the people and siphoning the money into the backhand. The backhand, like, like Sir Joe did for Queensland. You know, I'm going to pay all my mates to build the things that Queensland needs at the expense of Queenslanders. Isn't that exactly what you're all doing there? And this is you being pointed out for doing it at the expense of this entire country and its population. Did you put money in your own pocket? Money in your own pocket from God. Instead of managing what was God's, you took from God and put it in your own pocket. Was that the right thing to do? And Senator Rennick, is it now not time to tell these people that they've been caught out in what's called administrative fraud? Is it not time to tell these people that they're in cahoots with war criminals? It's reality time. The politics and all of the media hoo-ha doesn't add up to the actual law on the table here, Senator Rennick. So at some point, you're going to advise all these police that they're aiding and abetting war criminals? Are you going to advise all of these nurses that they're aiding and abetting war criminals? Are you going to advise all your colleagues in the parliament there that they're aiding and abetting war criminals linked to genocidal maniacs in other lands linked to sovereignties afar instead of those established in that 
League of Nations. Hmm. Hmm. Do we unwind the clock and put the truth on the table? Or do you all believe in a lie, thinking you can get away with it until some higher power comes along and says, hey, you did actually break those rules. Were you in inspectors that warned you that your decisions were a grave mistake? Um, let's talk about Dom Perrottet. Oh, yeah. uh, so, uh, well done, Dom. Uh, the, <laughs> the United Nations decided they can't be bothered with China and Iran and Venezuela. North and Korea. North Korea. Why bother with that? Let's go to Queenbian and check out the torture cells that are occurring Queen in Bean. Queen Bean. So the, the United Nations rocked up to Queen Bean and uh, the Queen Bean jail said, no, thanks. Yeah, well, so, You're so, not in. You haven't made an appointment. You're not in. So not allowing them in. What does that mean? Grave mistake. So is that, is that a reality that I'm talking about here? It's time to clean up house. It's time to clean up the estate. It's time to clean up that parliament and it's time to remove what is criminal from it, Senator Rennick. It's the only reason we're here. We don't care about your politics. We don't care about your portfolios as long as you manage them within the law. You have failed to do so in that government. And I wouldn't accuse you directly, Senator Rennick. You're one of the few that actually ask some of the pertinent questions in relation to liability over these matters. Financial, insurance-wise, and at the peril of your own life as according to the laws that you all signed up for. So we only care about the law here. It's time to clean father's house. It's time to put the foot down and Mr. Military Man, you know what I'm talking about here. Who's best placed at this time to lead the world into the fourth industrial revolution? Because you pretty much created this term. We're seeing the kind of technological strides that China has made with Huawei, with the 5G technology. Do you believe that this could potentially be China's time once again? We, we should make here uh, again a, a let's say, a differentiation. On the one hand, we have uh, state capitalism. On the other hand, we have shareholder or private capitalism. So it's a clash between two systems. I, I believe that um, state capitalism in the short term, in the short term provides certain advantages because you can mobilize in a concentrated way a lot of resources to reach a specific objective. But I believe that the future is not state capitalism or shareholder capitalism. The future is what I call stakeholder capitalism, which um, is combined with the social responsibility. You have a right to enforce the removal of the entire government, including some woke governor general appointed by that person that committed treason and created the office of a republic. An act of treason at law, at law, at law, at law, all day at law. King Vier Casement, 1917, these people did seek to undermine the realm, the realm. They, they did seek to undermine what was the fathers and turn it into a, re a republic. I call stakeholder capitalism, which um, is combined with a social responsibility. It's an act of treason. It doesn't matter which way you look at it. And it doesn't matter about what they did with John Howard. We can cover that act of treason in its separate, it's a separate act, right? So at law, Albanese should stand on his own merit here and not refer to the past unless he has some credible legal jurisdictional reason as to refer to that past, Senator Rennick. That's the bottom line here. 
This man created an act of treason against the constitution at which he sits in office and has created criminal offences going back as far as sitting in that office. And before, because we speak of two parties, three parties, four parties, it matters not. Does it, Mr. Military Man? Can you explain to your politicians, Mr. Military Man, the rules that are actually on the table? Do you think they'll understand? Do you think they'll comprehend? They played at the peril of their own lives. Well, I'm joined now by the Chief of Defence General, Angus Campbell. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Let's start with this question about commanders. Do you really believe they had no idea that 39 unlawful killings took place on their watch? David, thanks for the opportunity to speak with you and uh, to speak with your viewers. It's a very confronting question because it goes to the heart of what is command and what should commanders know. Now, that's what Justice Burton found. I've looked through his uh, report and he does start with a question of culture and behaviour and the performance in terms of uh, military discipline, standards and uh, the conduct of uh, work in the military in the way that we would describe as a professional force. These are issues that officers are responsible for and high commanders must ensure are being applied. Then into the field we see uh, what Justice Burton speaks of as a warrior culture and he does say that here uh, some officers have had an influence in that coming into certain parts of our force and being magnified and exemplified by some individuals uh, at the patrol commander level. Again, officers and high command have a role, indeed a responsibility, with regard to how units perform, the behaviours they exhibit, the discipline and the culture. See, so on the, on the going down of the sun over there, in the morning, when that sun rose in the east, we did remember something in the east. Some sort of spiritual world that rose. And you all thought it was a joke when it was actually tied to the very, very seat that you sit in at law. And it's an inescapable fact when it's judges, justices, king's counsellors, barristers that rely on a line of authority to be able to hold rule of law at heart and in truth. What did we say? We put a hand on a Bible. I swear to tell the whole truth, the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Would that be so help me my homeland instead of that king afar off? Well, what happens if you're in a veil of Siddham and Siddham collapses? Are you Sodom and Gomorrah? Or are you anchored with the blessing of Almighty God and the Holy Ghost called the Holy Spirit and unable to fall like Sodom and Gomorrah? So the question befalls all of you. Are you playing a game you wish to play or is there a homeland to defend at all odds for all those that stand and live on it as we breathe? Isn't that the utmost duty instead of poisoning its skies, its waters, its people's minds, its right? Instead of locking them down, enslaving them, digitizing them, requiring them to have a phone. Here you have this digital ID and digital wallet that we can just turn. Oh shit, there's no electricity today. Can't fill your car up. You need your digital wallet. Can't fill your car up. You need your digital ID to drive it because Mr. Police Officer that's got this backup generator in his car to run his little tablet that's tied to his little AI system is already automated all of your crimes and he's there just to collect. He's the debt collector, Senator Rennick. And we, the people, already realise this. 
under Hague Conventions on Debt Collection and Burdens of Warfare and, and human slavery, right? Human trafficking by a traffic notice to put people into debt to make them sweat labour for the state, for the state, for the state. By police officers that love to harm their own countrymen because they believe in a system that was set up to manipulate their minds. Set up by some really evil banking partners that might be linked to some sort of carbolic kind of theologies, Senator Rennick. By the mind, did they manipulate? By the mind, did they dumb people down? By the mind, is defined on the courtroom record by Justice Lonergan as being the delusion that you all work in. And that's a reality. A debtor is not a man, Senator Rennick. A debtor is obligated to some sort of banking machine instead of being free of the mind to see the game that those people play. Isn't that what their little book tells them to do? Didn't our book tell us to be wary of them in Revelations 2.9 and Revelations 3.9, Senator Rennick? We were told to be wary of these people. We were told to be wary of those communists. We, we did have a history of Anzac that defeated those communists in acts of peace. Peace. You know, like those debt collectors are trying to stay in an act of peace, are they? By committing criminal offences in the process of peacekeeping. Wouldn't that bring all of those Hague conventions on the table? And it would then define exactly what I'm saying. Get the broom out and start cleaning the house, all you witches. <laughs> sweep, sweep. Off you go, Tony. You're a criminal. <laughs> sweep, sweep. Off you go, Pauline. <laughs> sweep, sweep. Off you go, Malcolm. <laughs> all the witches are going to turn on each other, Senator Rennick. Because that's the inevitable game that you set up for each other. And it only gets worse from here as all the witches gather around the cauldron, attacking each other and throwing each other in. Should have stayed with God. Should have realised you can't serve two masters. You either serve that bank, Senator Rennick, or you serve that constitution. And I don't think Albo's serving that constitution at law in an act of treason, in an act of treachery, in an act of undermining the office at which he sits. In an act to undermine the country at which he represents. And you're asking Australians to tolerate this intolerable act. Intolerable act. Every police officer, every military man should be thinking right now, why aren't I following the law if this man tried to undermine my country? It might be all that fluoride in your brain. It's like brain rot. So we get this question, what can you do? First thing, get some silver in your hands. It is the real currency of the constitution and it puts you back in the middle class. That's the first thing of what you can do. Second thing you can do is realize something. Your children are rising up and stealing everything and causing havoc everywhere because, not because of you. It's because of that government setting up a society that 
should have been the way you lived, but isn't. And when you complain about losing rights, your children listen in. And I would say to those children, maybe look at what your parents are saying and stop stealing each other's cars because your friend's family is as important as yours. There are people responsible for all of this. And you can't go blaming the children. The police are responsible. The state's responsible. The federal government's responsible. And members like Senator Rennick are responsible because they're taking from you and your families. They're putting you and your families under a, a vice. They're expecting you to follow more and more and more rules. They're putting you under all of these distresses with this digital identification and all of these things on purpose. And it's going to cause things to get even more out there than they are today. And it is the direct responsibility of your Prime Minister's office, Anthony Albanese, your Prime Minister's office, Scott Morrison, who didn't even respond and refuse to interact with all of you, the people. This is very evident when we've been doing this a long time and they don't listen because they don't care. And Senator Rennick, you may pretend to care, but I will inform you right now that your office and the master you serve severs your capacity to care in a portfolio managed by finances. I call stakeholder oil capitalism. I call stakeholder oil capitalism. I call stakeholder oil capitalism. And this is the harsh reality of the equation in that you're treating this like a prison yard and you're treating these poor people like the prisoners that you can get all of the money off. Squeeze it out of the poor so that you can keep living your silver spoon lives. Do you think the world has had enough of your Zionist adventures? Do you think the world has had enough of your papist administrations? Do you think the world has had enough of all your lies and your bullshit that you speak out of that parliament every day on behalf of your shareholders and investors instead of the people? I call stakeholder oil capitalism. From a leader of the opposition who thought that saying sorry would be the end of the world, now he thinks listening to people will be the end of democracy. That's what he thinks, the, Mr Speaker. The, the conspiracy theories are the, colliding the with one another. The, the Prime Minister will pause. The member He's struggling to get the Prime his Minister scares will pause. Straight. The member for Petrie. In the lineage of their forefathers and their gods, it's very evident now that DEI investors have a stranglehold on you, suffocate you, to the point where you have to accept things that are actually criminal at law. And instead of those little hidden investors getting in shit for it, you all do. Because you never had the balls to stand up to Mr. Shareholder and say, no, we ain't going to privatise that stuff anymore. We're actually going to take it off you for committing a serious war crime. But you never get around to it, do you? Even though the law tells you to. So what can the rest of you do? Raise a red flag. Put one on the front door. Put one on the front gate. Look at those Americans celebrating their proud-to-be-American. Put your red flag 
everywhere you can. Display it to everyone you can. Discuss it with everyone you can. Tell them who your ANZAC were and tell them who these imposters work for. Tell them that the imposters have taken over government and that's why your country shifted into a whole communist ideology. Tell them about your forefathers and your gods and how foreign gods impact your gods. In Matthew 6.24, you refuse to serve those foreign gods. That's what you can do. You can stop participating in so much of their crap. Starve them. Don't use their reserve bank currencies so that their little war machine can't keep paddling along like a steam boat with a machine gun on the front, right? You can do all of these things by not using their reserves, by not feeding their machine, by taking that reserve bank note all the time as being real money when it's a borrowing called a credit. How do you think all of these greeny ideologies came out of your communist party called the Greens? Socialism going back 20 years, getting into the Aboriginal mindset for over 20 years to disrupt you as a country. Isn't that right, Adam Bant? <laughs> Communist. <laughs> tried so hard to weasel your way into a people who should have been given their sovereignty to mind manipulate them with your socialism, with your socialism, while those Anzac stomped all over it in the past, didn't they? With your socialism. Got to act like a good little nanny government. All those carbon credits are good, aren't they? For the bank. It's always good for the bank. It's never good for the people, is it? But this is a harsh reality. God told you that you should not go back to that golden calf, that reserve bank, all that stuff that was attributed to fucking your country over, putting it into a financial demise, allowing all of this foreign investment to take place in the very first place, allowing communists to overpower Zionists with their money to have a manipulative control over what was God's without a right from God, making it unlawful without a line of authority. I think Justice Lonergan confirmed, meaning that it can only be a crime. You can only beat this by stepping away from them and becoming your society again all across this country, raising that flag for your ANZAC and stop using that banker's reserve bank. Start standing up as towns demanding that those police leave your towns alone and stop using them as revenue-raising hotspots. There's a movie called The California Kid and it's all about a revenue-raising town that uses the traffic going through it to put the silver spoon on the mayor's table. California Kid, 1974, warned you about what they were about to do to all of you after the 1967 demise of all the currency. The debt collectors were going to arrive in uniforms and they were going to pretend to help you while they pulled the rug out from underneath your feet in their total ignorance. Pleb little police officer doesn't know that he's actually aiding and abetting criminals to undermine your country. He thinks he's doing his job because of all that insurance and liability stuff that was brought here by those banks in your poverty, bankruptcy, insolvency issue. Might have something to do with Constitution 115 and the lack of gold and silver in circulation as currency supply. Might have something to do with all of you signing all those contracts to be in the government. Good little public ward of state. Are you, are you a member of the public? And those police, 
they think that you're never going to walk into a Supreme Court and put this all down on the table. But that's coming. So you all need to step up and accuse them of their criminal offences and tell them, here's the criminal code that you broke, here's when you broke it, and here's your name attributed to those two things. I want you to deal with the crime that you committed, officer, and I want your command to deal with that crime. You could do that all across Australia, every police station, right? Are you sick and tired of human trafficking occurring on your land for bankers? Are you sick and tired of watching your country go into a demise because these people use these reserve bank notes and manipulate your economy through that system, making your homes worth a million and a half dollars? But I believe that the future is not state capitalism or shareholder capitalism. The future is what I call stakeholder capitalism, which um, is combined with the social responsibility. Are you happy with all of this? You've got to change. You've got to step up and say no more. We're not children. We see a bunch of criminals manipulating the pot in father's house. Get your hand out of the biscuit tin. Stop signing all the money off to yourselves. You've committed criminal offences against father's children. No one in father's will said that those things could occur. We're standing up for ourselves now. We don't want you in our parliament. We don't want criminals in our defence force. We don't want criminals in our police force. We don't want people that go outside of those rules in our country. And we're asking the United Nations to come in with its broom. <laughs> sweep, sweep. Off go all the criminals. Then we look at getting on with who we are as a people. Are you what this businessman says here in his speeches? Or are you going to give that all up? Let's start by acknowledging an uncomfortable truth. Australia's past is a foreign country. Once we were proud to be Australian, we, would, we could wave the flag without shame, and Australia Day was a celebration of unity. But those days are long gone. Our nation, once known for its laid-back attitude and larrikin spirit, has transformed into a nanny state where freedom is on a short leash. We've gone from, she'll be right, mate, to please sir, may I have another. The encroachment on our society and culture was insidious at first. So as you can see, Senator Rennick, I represent a large number of people that have had enough of your bullshit across the board as politicians. So I would suggest you sit there in the parliament and advise all of them to stop talking down to Australians like they are children and start listening to what the people want and start addressing those concerns instead of the concerns of your banking partners. You're manipulated, you'll buy all of your weapons from us while you go to our wars that we tell you to go to in your AUKUS agreement bullshit. Did any of the people in the country have a say in any of that while you got ripped off, ripped off, laughed at and manipulated over a submarine deal you already fucked up with the French? No, Australians wouldn't do that, Senator Rennick. Someone controlling Australian's government might do that with some sort of woke governor general. Hmm. We see it all. We're not happy, Elbo. You tried to undermine what was God's and replace it with something that doesn't even know what it is itself. Is it a woman or something else? I don't know. There are 69 different weirdos to choose from in your delusion, aren't there?
Hmm. That should demonstrate very clearly, Senator Rennick, that the people across the planet have had enough of your woke ideologies and your communism and all your money pushing everyone around with your digital IDs and everything. And I have done everything in my power to stop these people from being violent. And I'm warning you very clearly in that parliament, I can't stop them all. You've brain trained a bunch of monkeys. And those monkeys are going to turn on you. And they won't use weapons. They'll use what they did in every other country. Fire. And it's unfortunate truth that you're just not willing to accept in your parliament that you're creating a destabilised position in a country and talking about the inability to defend yourselves on a world stage with a defence force that you wokeified too. And given current global tensions, a defence expert reckons Australia should seriously consider bringing back a form of national service. Dr Alexei Moraviev from Curtin University says boosting defence force numbers now could be a smart move. And amid NATO fears of an all-out war with Russia, he says Australia should be training new troops while we still have time. Wokeified too. Hmm. Is there a problem now? While you're all squirming there, someone else's money in control, when you tried to manipulate, manipulate an administration to your advantage, therefore causing this to occur. And this was the warning that was given out almost 20 years ago, 15 years ago. This was the exact thing that I warned you all about. You were playing with fire and you would fuck up everything for everyone for playing with that fire, Tony Abbott. Now, if you'd like to help me out, bank accounts, blah, blah, blah. These are gonna pay for the court cases. This is helping me pay for food every week. This is helping me stay above board while we legally go through this and look at what they have committed in the way of criminal offenses. So all of your support is kind of necessary to move forward into these next steps. Raise that red ensign and make everybody see it every single day. Attribute it to your crown. Attribute it to your constitution. It is your line of authority. It displays who your forefathers were by their colours. And this is an undeniable fact while this Australian government lies about your history. 1939 declarations of manipulating the people into a new history. They don't need to know the old world. They're manipulated into the new world and that's why the internet is full of all of this Tartarian bullshit. Because the people that run your country lie to your children every single day in an international agreement to do that. So all of your support is necessary to get this message out there. And all of you need to start stepping up and making those accusations that these are criminal offences. We will no longer put up with this militarised policy in our country. Senator Rennick, we don't want these police thugs across our land anymore. We don't want them abusing our children. We don't want them uh, uh, locking our children up. We don't want to see the likes of those facilities in our country that the United Nations came to inspect. This is the end of it all, Senator Rennick. They clean their act up fully and you bring back the sheriff according to law. You bring back the sheriff according to law because there is a, a serious change going on internationally and we will not let you fall like Sodom and Gomorrah. You like to be. You like to be. While you continue arguing every day like zombies in a parliament, totally ignorant of what's going on around you and the foundations of your country that might collapse. Everyone needs to show that every day. Everyone needs to tell their children 
this is what we want. We want those police and their mechanisms to go away. We want our sheriffs back. We want the law of the land to look after our children instead of your commercial policy enforcement. We don't want to see your batons and your militarised hardware and your flashy red lights and your militarised vehicles. You chose to do that against your own children as a police officer? You're a disgrace to your own family. Undermining your own family and your own family estate according to law. So I want all of you to step up, put some silver in your hands and start defending as the fire of the house. Go and read Numbers 1. Just go and read Numbers 1. Because mentally, you kind of know they're an evil force on your land. And Numbers 1 tells you how to gather the men in a call to arms. Gather your coats of arms, stop doing business with these criminals and start defending each other. And we'll move forward from here. We'll be able to remove what's criminal from this game. Be able to look at all this manipulation of land title into corporations instead of sovereignty under section 121. We'll be able to look at a lot of things. So drop in a bank account, say hello, put forward some information, demonstrate the crimes that these people have committed and basically say, no more. We won't put up with your foreign administration running us out into nothing. We have a right of self-determination according to your laws and we're going to stand to that self-determination. We're going to show you who we are. We're going to show you our flags. And if you want to impact on that, then beware the backlash that comes. Because as a growing people realise their foundations true to their own country and realise you be working for foreign interests, what do you think they're going to do to you? And that's the harsh reality here, Senator Rennick. That's the reason you put a fence around Parliament. That's the reason you put walls up in councils. That's the reason you made the country look like a prison. So that they never rise up against what evil is in their government. They never ever speak up for themselves when they're the ones with the right of self-determination to point out who's committing crimes under the rules of that administration. And we will stand in these courtrooms from now on. You are creating an enemy in the people just demonstrated by all the youth crime that's going on. It's time to get with reality and realize that this is generational and created by you in 75 years of peacekeeping. And we, Generation X, I think they call us, the ones that you try and ignore are stepping up and saying, kiddies, you don't see the evil these people are. Kiddies, get ready because we're about to bring them down to the level they should be brought down to. Everyone should be obligated to the rules. Isn't that right, Senator Renica? And yet, despite the fact that we've now essentially clinically tested on billions of people worldwide. So shouldn't you follow them and ring the Australian Federal Police and start cleaning up that parliament from all those administrative defrauders and war criminals that we see on a daily basis that hide behind cameras and sinking or something? No, it's a worse. Much worse. We've run out of tonic. Run out of tonic? But that's not terrible. That's catastrophic. I'm sorry, sir. You're sorry? What do you mean you're sorry? It's like Napoleon saying I'm sorry after the Battle of Waterloo. Perkins, do you realise that gin and tonic is the cornerstone of the British Empire? The Empire was built on gin and tonic. Gin to fight the boredom of exile and quinine to fight malaria. 
How else do you think we could have carried the cross of responsibility for the lives of millions without the friendly fortitude of gin and tonic? And you've run out of tonic, Perkins. That's treason. Go before I strike you. Very good, sir. 